FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. A man who's probably having trouble uh, standing upright is Tim Jones because he was up late last night and at it again today. Tim, how are you? Hey, good morning, Mark, or good good afternoon, I guess. And uh, <laughs> yeah, a little weary, but uh, boy, what a wild ride election night was in the state of Missouri. Well, you know, I was talking about this with Jeff Allen earlier, our program director. I, you know, that Missouri scout poll just about nailed the the difference. I mean, the numbers were a little bit different in the end, but but in terms of it being a runaway victory for Greitens, that scout poll that was out a few days ago hit it right on the nose. Yes, he uh, he changed pollsters at the end, and his final poll was with a different polling company that definitely, whatever they used, whatever parameters they utilized, they definitely were a lot more closer to the mark, and it showed Eric Greitens putting some distance between himself and the rest of the pack, and that's what happened last night. Were you surprised? I was surprised at how uh, John Bruner underperformed in southwest Missouri. John Bruner and Eric Greitens made that the ground zero for their campaigns. Catherine Hannaway was hoping to, to run away with it here in uh, St. Louis and in Kansas City and more of the suburban areas. And she was down in southwest Missouri, but, but John Bruner and Eric Greitens really made that their last stand. And everyone thought they were neck and neck down there. It was anything but. The numbers down there, Eric Greitens started blowing everybody away early and he never lost that ground. He maintained it the rest of the night. Was it a reflection at all of the low turnout? Because I heard the number was around 25%. So, you know, look at, look at all the dynamics we have here. You have a four-person race. Missouri, unlike a lot of other states, is not a runoff state, meaning in a lot of states, if you have four people in a race in a primary, they take the top two, and then they run them again. So last night, it would have been Eric Greitens, versus John Bruner, and it would have been a 50-50 shot for both of them, and who knows where all those Catherine Hannaway, Peter Kinder votes would have gone. In Missouri, all you got to do is get a plurality. I say all you got to do, but in a four-person race, Eric Greitens won with 35%. 65% of the field picked one of the other three. So Eric Greitens is going to have a lot of work to do to get 65% of the rest of the Republican field on his side, heal a lot of wounds in 95 days, and take on the King Kong of campaigning, Chris Coster. <laughs> I was just about to say, Coster is going to be tough because and I was watching several of the news stations last night, and I mean, w- within minutes of him being declared the winner because he was going to win that race anyway, he had ads running on the local news stations uh, on the TV side for his gubernatorial race. Both sides, Mark. uh, uh, RGA, Republican Governors Association, released a statement almost immediately after the AP said Coster's the nominee. RGA said, you know, political opportunist, Chris Coster, he's not right for Missouri. And then Chris follows that up with a salvo back saying, I am the right guy for Missouri. You know, I know Chris Coster very well. There's there's a lot I do not agree with him on policy-wise, specifically his stance on on right to work and on trial lawyer stuff. However, uh, Chris has been someone who's looked at in Income tax cut policy. He's A plus rated from the NRA. He's in favor of education reform. He is a master at campaigning. He's 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 one of the guys I know that's the best at, at being in the middle of the aisle and attracting a lot of people from both parties. He's going to be a a, a really uh, a big foe Formidable. Uh, for Eric yeah. to take on. Yeah, I think you're right, and and he's gonna he's already got a. a campaign uh, coffer full of cash too ready to go uh, so, mark i predict this is going to be a 40 million dollar plus race all said and done that's a lot Let's jeff, look- allen, jeff allen is licking his chops right now. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he is he'll be in here in a minute agreeing with you um let's look down ticket for a minute yep. I, you know the lieutenant governor race I, I don't know mike parsons at all bev randall's made it a point to come on my show a number of times uh was that a, was that an upset I think it was, Mark. You know, I thought, I thought, and the polls too, right? And another, the polls were wrong on this race. The polls, right. even though it was right. close, the polls had Bev up almost every single poll except one. There was one outlier poll that had a huge margin, much huger than what the result ended up being. So it was technically wrong as well. So, yeah, that bit of a surprise. And you know, Bev did very well in the urban areas and the suburban areas. Mike Parson outperformed her in the rural areas, and. 
you know, I thought it was wonderful that Missouri, uh, that there, there was a potential nominee uh, with a black woman running on the Republican ticket. And I, I had thought it was time for that here in our state. I'm a little disappointed that Missourians didn't take a better look at Bev Randall's because she really, to me, is the complete package of the new face and voice of the Republican Party. But yeah. all credit to Mike Parson for really pulling off a significant victory. Uh, the Josh Hawley race, and by the way, I'm going to get him on the air here coming up in the next hour. Um, I, I my, my speculation is, I'd like to get your thoughts on it, I think, Kurt Schaefer hurt himself with those terrorism ads that he ran against Josh Hawley. They seem to be a bridge too far, right? And we talked about this. That would have been like uh, accusing F. Lee Bailey, who uh, famous attorney who worked in the O.J. Simpson case of being right. a murderer because he represented yeah. O.J. Simpson. You know, yeah. people people understand in this day and age. You know, lawyers take cases doesn't mean they are. They don't represent the, you know, that that case necessarily. They represent the client and they try to bring them justice. You know, Kurt Schaefer had a difficult record to defend. He he was a senator from Mid Missouri who was in a very difficult district his first term, and his voting record was different from his first term than his second. I knew all those things. I knew that a good candidate would exploit all those things and point them out. You know, we call those contrast ads. Some people call them negative ads, but they're, <laughs> I, I don't know that anything, you know, it, look, that was a nasty race. They both, yeah. they both yeah. went very <laughs> negative and a lot of, lot of deep contrast there. But Josh Hawley, another exciting, fresh, young, new face in the Republican Party. I'm, I think Josh Hawley wins the general. I mean, he's going up against Teresa Hensley, who was a surprise. Jake Zimmerman is devastated today, I believe, in losing that primary. He thought he had that in the bag. Teresa Hensley has lost a ton of races recently as she's tried to move up the ladder. So I don't know that she's that strong of a candidate. I think Josh Hawley is, and I think he wins in November. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that was an interesting... So, so you like the odds of of us having more than one statewide elected Republican come fall, right? Absolutely. I believe Eric Schmidt, who did not have a primary opponent, didn't talk about him a whole lot, lot, lot not uh, last night because of that. I believe Eric Schmidt wins treasurer. I believe Jay Ashcroft wins secretary of state over Robin Smith. Uh, I believe that Josh Hawley wins AG as, uh, as um, against Teresa Hensley. Now, Mike Parson has to take on another dynasty name. He has to take on Russ Carnahan. And, you know, a lot of people say that Russ Carnahan's not the swiftest Carnahan in the tool shed, but l let's look at what Jay Ashcroft did uh, in his race. I'm not, co I'm not comparing them, you know, that way as far as skill level, but Jay Ashcroft had a great name to run on, and he ran a solid campaign, and he won very handily. Russ Carnahan uh, still has a lot of residual name ID versus Mike Parson, who does not. Uh, I think the governor's race will be the most challenging race for Republicans. Yes, Eric Greitens is attracting a lot of young, new voters, a lot of excitement, but I'll go back to my first point. 65% of Republicans in this state voted against Eric Greitens last night. He's got 90 days to heal those wounds and unite that party, whereas Chris Coster has a strong Democrat united front and over $10 million in the bank already. Right. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Tim Jones, listen, I, I appreciate your time today. I know you've had a busy day already, and you probably need to get a few, uh, few winks of sleep here at some point. <laughs> Thanks, Mark, for having me on. You know, we'll be heading now into the general, and Folks can listen to me on your show or follow me at Speaker Tim Jones. It's going to be an exciting fall. Absolutely. We'll talk to you again soon, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tim Jones, a former Missouri House Speaker.